Good morning, everybody. As always, welcome to the channel and thanks for stopping by. And always keep in mind, right up here, life is good. So my name is Rich. I'm the channel host. And normally we're talking about building our small drone businesses, all the tools and devices we use. And today I wanted to talk to you about an opportunity that came into me just a few days ago, an inquiry to do a really cool project that unfortunately I've had to take a pass on just because of timing. So I thought I'd share this with you and also let you know I do have an entire class series on making money with your drone. And in that class series, we actually cover several of the projects that we've worked on over the years or that we're currently working on. So you might want to check that out a little later. But all right, so I got a call just the other day. Actually, I got an email first from easydrone.net where a potential client got in touch and said that they've got a project that they wanted to run by me. So normally what I do is I'll drop an email back or I'll give a call to the potential client. In this case, um, gave a call and had a conversation with the client. They're a paving company. And the in the case of their project that they've got coming up in just a couple of days, that's one of the big reasons why I'm not doing that project. But um, a project for redoing a gated community in the Sedona area. So Sedona is gorgeous. We've got the red rocks there. Wouldn't it be cool to be flying, you know, some construction progression in an area like that? So that got me really excited. Um, but then the time frames came out and the time frames weren't working well for me. So normally what we do is we'll have a conversation with a potential customer. We'll feel out their needs after they've contacted us through the website or a direct call. Uh, we'll get back in touch with them and have a conversation to find out what it is they're looking for. So they thought that this was an interesting enough project that they probably wanted to document it in a time-lapse fashion, which is something we specialize in. Now, our big problem was that the timing is back-to-back -back with some other things that we've got going on. So they're a little rushed, and uh, maybe if they'd gotten in touch with us a couple weeks ago, we could have figured out a way to work around um, uh, you know, working with them. But so... I let the customer know. I said, I'm going to send you a list of questions. Um, you know, I need to know about the location. I need to know, you know, how often you want it flown. And if we're just looking at video, stills, ortho mosaics, all of those things. And I also needed the addresses because I needed to find out, can we fly here in the first place? Remember, controlled airspace exists all around us. When we're in Prescott, we've got a lot of controlled airspace around us. We're in Class D. But normally, nine times out of ten, we can do a Lance, uh, Lance request and get to fly that area. So one of the first big things that I did after um, getting some information back from the client, um, I'm just pulling up my iPhone here because I want to grab an app for you. Oh, and uh, Let's see, we're actually going to do some screen sharing here. And by the way, I'm taking this slow with you um because you know i walk through a process with clients as well i don't want to overspeed this i have had a couple comments recently that say some of my videos go too long i do apologize for that but i want to cover everything and i want you to get the feel of you know this is how rich approaches these things when new customers get in touch so i'm going to do screen mirroring right now and let's see i'm going to do screen mirroring there we go so the first thing I wanted to know about, I, I need those addresses or parcel numbers to find out, you know, where am I? So I've got air control, which was from a loft. I'm going to pop that up really quick. So I had this great conversation with the client. We followed up with uh, emails and then I went to work to find out what's going on, where everything is. And um, the client sent along one of the roads was in Cal Bonita. So this is the area, and as you can see, I'm going to zoom this out. So all of the all of the um, the more red, you know, red to brown here. This is all wilderness area in Sedona. So we know some areas where we can't fly. Also, there is an airfield in Sedona, but no controlled airspace here. So we'd be okay to fly in this area. And sure enough, as I zoomed into this. I found the entire subdivision where they're going to be working. So they're going to be redoing the roads from here where my mouse is all the way down to that area. So this is actually a sizable flight area and has multiple spurs and uh, circles at the end of each of these. And so 
This is all part of the community. They're going to be starting in the very near future, repaving the entire community. So this is something that community members have been looking forward to as well. Um, the clients had already contacted all the neighbors in the area, plus their homeowners association had let them know, hey, we're going to be repaving this. So the big thing here was, you know, can we fly this for them? So my first check there, I wanted to see, and so far everything is looking good for me. In addition to that, afterward I did go check out, uh, I'm going to stop mirroring here for you, I did go check out uh, Sky Vector as well to make sure that we'd be okay in that airspace. After that, after my initial search with the Aloft app, um, I then go to QGIS. So QGIS has become a big part of my workflow because I can check areas out. I can figure out how I want to set up my flight paths like I've done with other uh, projects like the um, QGIS planning for Solstice right up here. But here we are. It's a new empty project is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to click on that. And so I love using QGIS. Number one, it's open source, so it's free. And so let's take a bigger look at this, shall we? I'm going to just change me on the screen. And now that I've done that, I'm going to make sure. So now I'm down in the lower right-hand corner. But so QGIS is an open source GIS platform. And one of the things I really like about it is some of the maps that I can get my hands on actually have parcels so county tax parcels available to me so i'm going to go to quick map services this isn't a class on doing qgis however you can check some of my other classes here on channel where we have talked more about qgis i'm going to go down and use esri here and i'm going to go down to the topo version and now we got this little map going on here in the center of qgis now over on the left hand side let me see here Let's see if we can zoom in here. There we go. So I'm going to use OpenStreetMaps to search. And I'd already done this before, so I'm just going to click on it, and it's going to pull up that road for me in just a moment. Let's see here. Well, I'm waiting for the little pinwheel now. There we go. All right, so we've got the address or the approximate address. And now that's going to pop up right there, and I can double-click that. And that's going to bring me right into the same map area. It pulled in a little over zoomed, so I'm just going to zoom that out a bit more. So we're just waiting for it. There we go. All right. So, in fact, this is the whole area. So using QGIS helped me get a feel for this now. So there is Calinda and Calinda Court. So this is the entire community area. I'm going to zoom this out just a bit more. So normally, if we were going to go for this with this job, I would most likely go in here and generate a shape file um, around this area. But basically, we're going to be flying in this area right here is where we would be flying if we were doing the job for them. So this painted cliffs drive here isn't part of it, but this Calinda over here is. So we are probably looking at, you know, if we were to mark this out, I'd be dragging some lines through here, down along here. So this is kind of an odd shape, but in the end, it's going to cover everything they need. So if we were looking to do ortho mosaics here, you know, we can do that polygon and export a KML file afterward and upload it to one of our tools. So since I played around with this a little bit, um, I also, here we go, we're going to go back on the screen mirroring because I forgot one thing. So I do things, you know, as they occur. Normally on channel, I don't have everything scripted. I walk through, you know, my process, and sometimes I miss one of my steps, but I just did want to share this with you as well because I did a little extra testing. So I'm going back to the Mac Studio one more time. There we go. And just for curiosity's sake, I took another look with um, Maps Made Easy yesterday. So I actually created a new area on Maps Made Easy, so Map Pilot Pro, and had blocked out what this is going to look like. So this would be the area that we'd be flying. And let's see here. So I had set this for 272 feet. I was going for 275 with an overlap of 70 and 70. And we're doing a normal mission here. And what we're finding out here, let's go ahead and close that. And find out over on the other side. So the recommendations here, we're looking at a 54-acre site, 
and we'd be flying 6.2 miles in total. The suggested path speed that uh, Map Pilot Pro is giving me is 19.1 miles per hour, and it's saying the duration is about 22 minutes, so potentially two batteries on this. We'd collect about 345 images, and then we could put that together in Metashape or WebODM or Pix4D. We could make a really nice ortho map, or maybe if we wanted to, we could also do a 3D model of this area. So now that you've seen this, we're going to pop ourselves out of here. There we go. And I am now going to get this off of the screen mirroring. And there we go. Okay. So this is the normal process. The call comes in, I get some information, I do some research, I even do a little pre-planning if, if I'm up for it. Now, what, what I decided, uh, what froze me out of this project yesterday was one of the last pieces of information that the client gave me. They want to start this next week. They've already got a full schedule ahead of them and the timing of it, I just can't do the start date for them, unfortunately, which, you know, everything falls apart doing a time-lapse project for these folks. So they've got their date set for next week, and I already have some appointments going on for next week. I actually even looked around. I contacted several of uh, drone operators that I know in the Phoenix area to see if anyone would have an interest. And in the end, too far of a drive time for those folks that I got in touch with. Hopefully, they'll be able to find somebody else. I looked around in Sedona as well for them, and the one drone operator I came across seems to do more um, cinematography and still images and showcasing the beauty of Sedona and not so much this construction kind of work. So in the end, I did get back in touch with the clients and say to them, you know, given the timing, if you guys had gotten in touch a couple weeks ago, I could have scheduled some things differently, but there's no way that I can do the start date that they need, which is next week. So I do hope that they find the right uh, drone pilot um, who can do this for them. This would be a lot of fun because not only could we be doing the ortho mosaic here, time-lapse video up each of these uh, roads and cul-de-sacs, time-lapse video of the actual pavement uh, getting ripped up and new pavement getting put in. This would be a lot of fun. This would be something that we're definitely up for. So we did let the folks know at this paving company that down the road, if they give us a little more heads up in their upcoming projects, we'd be happy to work with them on them. So there you go. There is the uh, full story of a recent potential job. And this job was worth thousands of dollars uh, for us easily. So it's also disappointing in having to take a pass because, hey, that's revenue. But I just wanted to give you a feel for this is what happens at AZ Drone when an inquiry comes in. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope it didn't go too long. And I hope that we've covered everything to give you an idea of what we do when that potential new customer gets in touch and we are interested in the project. All right, everybody, we'll see you again real soon on channel. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. And remember, once again, life is good. We'll see you.